Hello, my name is Paul Godinez. I'm with Logix Magazine. And today we're going to talk about how to program a PLC like a pro. You know, I'm sure you're you're wondering how to write a PLC program. Um, and, and you probably have tried to figure out how the pros know what to code, when and where to put that code in a program. And, and how can they remember so many formulas and algorithms? I'm sure you've wanted to look inside the mind of a professional programmer. If you're working hard to become a programmer yourself, you're probably like every other newbie. You're, you're probably looking at programming through a narrow prism. Instead today, let's look over the shoulder of a professional programmer and discover exactly how they create their magic. Now, if you're learning to write uh, ladder logic in a PLC, you're focusing likely only on learning a new instruction. Okay, spend a lot of time learning how the how the instructions work. Um, or you're probably in that point where you're hooking up to the PLC and trying to get a few outputs or inputs to twinkle green at you. Well, that is important. It's also important to step back from the in-depth studying you're doing uh, now and start looking at the big picture. And just to let you know, it's the big picture that separates the pros from the newbies. You know, to get some insight as to how a pro writes a program, let's peek inside a pro's notebook to understand how they think. For example, let's say a senior engineer went to a meeting and was informed that a machine he's working on needs to have a part sensor added. Very typical. Well, you know, that's pretty easy, you might think. Just an input. So uh, the pro uh, professional PLC programmer pulls out his notebook, starts making some notes. To, you know, in the notebook it says, add a sensor to a machine to detect a part before the machine cycles. Okay, then, easy enough. Now, let's say he's making the notes for a junior engineer to tackle uh, this task. with, And he wants it with no errors, okay? So, to begin with, uh, he has a few additional notes because he wants to remind the junior engineer of, this, of the steps involved with this simple task. After he notes the brand and the model of the sensor here, he wants him to use, he also makes some shorthand notes on a few other items as well. For instance, uh, when wiring the sensor, brown is power, he wants him to use black for the signal, and it's a 24 volt DC circuit. Okay, good notes. He wants him to add the input to the PLC program, and he wants him to use the next sequential address for the inputs, next sequential available address. Okay, he wants him to add in the sensor and the bag check status. Uh, he wants him to add in a multi-indicator on the HMI. And the multi-indicator will have gray for de-energized and green for energized. He wants him to add in a bypass button on the HMI. And the bypass active bit, which is the little pilot light, okay, indicator light. He wants him to add in the bypass in the bypass routine in the PLC. Okay, now he'll need to add in the HMI faults messaging, <clears throat> add to the add it to the proper HMI nest group, and let's assume there's two parts nests in our project. Wants him to add the sensor to the fault routine uh, to trigger to remind the operator to remove the parts from the nest for missing and or parts never cleared after the last cycle. Wants him to update the PLC program file, add the file to the network um, or backup PC drive, depending on what the company uses. He wants him to test the HMI messaging, wants him to test the PLC code, you know, test the manual bypass, test the bypass code, test the indicator lights, he wants him to test the uh, program in auto cycle. He wants him to test that the faults trigger when the part is missing and when it hasn't cleared the nest before the next cycle. <sighs> now you're you're probably thinking, wow, uh, that's a lot of stuff just to add one sensor. Uh, and you're right. Um, well, let's let's think about this from a high level perspective. 
uh, while a beginner is only focused on adding an input to the sensor and output for the indicator light. And I'm sure that for a lot of you, that might have been what you first thought. Very simple. My input, my output, indicator light. Okay. A professional thinks about the entire process, every condition that could arise where that sensor could be used. In the manual mode, in the auto mode, before the cycle, during the cycle, and after the cycle. He thinks about uh, the need to prompt the operator with the process and fault messaging. He's thinking about being able to monitor the sensor throughout the program and during the cycle as well with status bits. You know, if you think about it, all he's asking the junior engineer to do is have a physical sensor added, then add in a bypass option, then uh, to add in the faults for those times when the sensor doesn't see the part, when the auto cycle start buttons are pushed, and if the sensor hasn't cleared before re-pushing the auto cycle start buttons again to start the next cycle. He's also asking to add the indicator light um, to the a HMI to visually identify the sensor and then to have the indicator added to the proper nest group. Remember we said there were two nest groups. Next, he's asking to have the AutoCAD print updated so that the so that anyone who, who needs them, like a electricians, customers, fellow engineers, they have the most current updates. Next, he's asking to have the network updated. Well, you know, most companies set up a network drive or, or files uh, to store the master PLC programs in. And these files will contain the newest version uh, of the program. Uh, <clears throat> with the, he wants that in the PLC program update. And he wants to ensure that the engineer updates his work. Okay. Now, take a minute to think through this logic. It's simple to follow. Even if you're not exactly sure how to write the code yet, you can see the logic, the big picture of this type of thinking. All he's doing is asking to add a sensor to PLC program, then add in the status, back checks, push buttons, uh, push button active bits, the parts missing, parts never cleared, faults and messaging, then test, test, and test the updates. It's pretty simple, really. Actually, if you use this procedure every time you're programming and or build your own procedure based on likely conditions, then you are starting to program a PLC like a pro. Let me know if you have, what you think. If you have any questions, love to help you out. Uh, in the meantime, feel free to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel, Logics Magazine. Until next time, this is Paul.